Hello, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of Game and Interactive Media Design. What we did so far was we created a tabletop, we created some table legs, and then last video I asked you to delete a couple of legs, because what we're going to do is uh, something kind of fun. I'm going to keep these as they are. I'm just going to group them to make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to use my selection tool, and I can either you know what let's have some fun let's use our selection tools in a fun way so I'm going to make my front viewport big by right clicking in it hitting alt W oh look at that that's not pushed up enough I'm gonna have to move this just a little bit up make sure that's pushed up enough so that it makes sense that these are resting on it um hold on I just realized, so this is just, maybe this will be a fun exercise, but if I want to move this exactly below that, what I'm going to have to do is I can use the alignment tool the way I've used it before. And what I'm going to do is with this object enabled, what I want is this uh, gizmo, I want the pivot point to be on the very top so I can align the top to the bottom. Um, actually, you know what? I think I can do it here. If I just choose the align tool, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can do it regularly I'm gonna click this because I want the top of this object to align to the bottom of that object so let's click it now normally it would be the Z because Z is up but the way 3d studio max works is it changes its orientation its grid orientation and its axes a little bit you have to be very aware of it because I can see this gizmo shows me Y is up now and X is left and right I actually only want to move this in the Y position and in this case, I don't want to move its pivot point from the current object, which was the crossbar. I actually want its maximum value to align with the minimum value of the one I have selected. And there we can see the maximum, which is the highest value, the toppest of that, is going to be aligned to the bottomest value of the target. And notice you can see, you know, if I aligned minimum to minimum, you can see its bottom is aligned to the bottom of the new one center to uh, bottom will be there the center of the crossbar is now aligned to the bottom of that top plank and same thing because the pivot point was in the center there's no difference if we choose that so again maximum aligned to the minimum say okay and now that crossbar is exactly placed whoops um, along the bottom edge there all right but let's do something uh, more fun or continue the fun. I'm going to hit F for front view and I'll go into wireframe mode. And what I want to do is select all of the tabletops, uh, table legs, sorry. So I could do that using the selection tools. Let's go ahead and go into crossing mode. And I like to do the lasso selection region. And I start here, draw a circle around here, and let go like that. And then I just selected it. Again, if windowed option was selected, and I did that, I would only be selecting the bottom crossbar when I let go there. And that's because I didn't completely select the table legs. And that's where, like, you could do that. You could do this. Woo, but you have to make sure not to select any of the top planks fully there. So, okay, I did that. All I want to do is group that. So I'm going to go to group, group, and I'm going to call it table legs. Yay. And what I'm going to do is add a modifier to this group. So right now, this group is selected. Um, in my command panel, I can see, let's pull this out, that I have table legs selected. And I can add modifiers to it. There's nothing to modify except for adding a modifier. And the modifier I'm going to add is called mirror. Now, mirror starts off wrong actually <laughs> it's not doing anything number one and that's because the mirror is in the center and it actually did mirror this object but because there's there's it's symmetrical it doesn't look like it mirrored it okay so what we're going to do is we need to change how this mirror shows number one we want to mirror the legs across the table in this direction so the mirror should be going back and forth to the center well let's change the mirror axis to why okay now that we've done that you see how we can it's going to mirror across this way just like if we said 
do we want to do that? No, let's do just Y. Um, and the other thing that we want to do is copy. And you'll see with copy enabled, we can change the offset there to that. And that way we don't have to model everything twice, right? This is what I probably should have done. I'm going to tap L to go into my left viewport. And I just want to make sure that is placed at roughly the same spot. Um, push this down a little bit. Yeah, that's about it. There. Um, if you change this to Z, you could see it would mirror it up above it. If you change it to X, you could see it mirrored it in that direction. Um, same things if you want to mirror it twice, you know, in the X and the Y, X and Z, uh, you could do that. But this is all we need is the Y axis. And if we didn't copy it, it wouldn't have left itself here. So we, we in this case, we do want to copy it. If you want to mirror something that you've already modeled and you don't need its copy, you just want to mirror stuff, um, then you wouldn't include copy. All right, uh, let's go ahead and just allow this. And we're almost done. I think in this video, we can pretty much do this the last couple steps for right now for the object. And that would be to select four of these planks and shift, drag them down. And we do want to do instances because we do want those to be almost exactly the same as the top ones. And I am going to go ahead and group this together. And I'm going to call this bottom planks. And the reason why I'm grouping them is because I'm actually going to align them in the Z direction using the align tool. And I'm only going to align them in the Z direction. And I'm going to align the minimum, so the bottom of these planks, to the tops of this plank. And that's what I just did. And I'm going to say OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is oops, move these here. Oh, and you know what I can see is that these are actually not, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm wondering, okay. What I'm going to do is scrap what I just did. You need to see that I can make mistakes. So you, this is going to happen to you all the time. You're going to make a decision and then you'll regret that decision. And so what I'm going to do is select gosh oh I just don't like this oh no no I'm gonna go back in time command Z command Z command Z command Z I do want this what I'm gonna do next is scale this in the proper direction so I'm gonna tap the R key now R turns it into the scale mode what you don't want to do is have tap R again tap R again Keep tapping R and look at the toolbar at the top. You can see there's three different scale modes. The one that always uh, messes up my model is squash and select or select and squash. And when you scale it in one direction, it pinches it like it's clay, almost like there always has to be the same amount of material in this object. Um, and so that's actually screws me up a lot when I tap dub R too, too often. The other two modes are, are just as helpful. One is uniform scale, one is non-uniform scale. So, but either one, I can click on this X axis and only scale it in the X. And so I'm gonna go into front mode and I'm going to, uh, this is what I'm gonna do to actually scale it. No, 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 I'll just scale it like this. I'll just scale it like this. Um, I'm going to right click this there and that's probably good. There we go. And there's our table model. In our next video, we are going to look into creating materials because right now um, 
this plank, they don't have any materials, even though they look like they have a material. Like I could go into rendering right here and click on the render button and it's going to render something that kind of looks like a table, but there's actually not a material there. Um, there's actually no lights, there's no camera, and there's no materials, but it does show me something. Um, we won't get into lighting in this case, but we will get into creating very simple materials that we can bring into a game engine. Okay, I'll see you then.